Hi, uh, welcome to this video. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is um, a bit of a whistle stop tour through my uh, imaging process. I'm going to go through as quickly as possible so you get a kind of feel of uh, what I do and there will be another video that goes into a bit more detail. Um, so uh, I have this uh, M51 image um, uh, already loaded. Um, you'll see I've got a number of icons down the, the right hand side that I've uh, pre-set up in my environment. Um, what I'll first do, because you'll see that there's nothing in this image, is um, auto stretch uh, that image. You can see um, the galaxy has appeared, it's got a very green tinge and you'll see that the um, images don't all stack up so you can see that there's um, a slight artifact in the image where it's not quite aligned. So we'll start off with a, um, a dynamic crop basically to, um, yeah, to, to make sure that we've got um, only the bit of the image that we want to keep and I'm going to be quite aggressive with this purely because there's um, yeah quite a large amount of image rotation. Crop the image, click on execute um, to uh, complete the crop. So that's that bit done. Uh, next bit I then move on to automatic background extraction. Uh, tend to use uh, values of 8 and 8, leave everything else as it is. Um, select a subtraction from the uh, correction in target image correction um, and uh, then hit the square to apply that um, to the image. Um, you'll see here I kept, kept the background just so you can see it. Um, there's a, a, a slight amount of um, gradient that's been uh, subtracted from the image. And if we go onto the main um, image you can see that there's already a significant improvement um, the green color cast has been removed and um, yep so happy with that going to remove that one and move on to the next uh, I use command zero quite a lot to um, to resize this image to a, a larger image or I use uh, command T um, to, to reduce it to a more manageable one uh, if you're using Windows um, then replace command with uh, control uh, so what we're going to do next is uh, dynamic background extraction. Um, so this one's a bit more involved. Um, what we tend to do first is I change the default sample radius to about 20. Um, hit generate. And for some reason, it doesn't want to generate. That's interesting. Okay, it's complaining about the tolerances aren't really good enough, which is intriguing. Um, let's increase the tolerance to 0.75, and that worked. Okay, um, quite sure why that was. Um, <laughs> mainly because I've just recorded the longer version of this video and did exactly the same thing, and it's fine. So what we want to do now is to zoom in here and the idea is that you're basically selecting the background um, to, to basically subtract or kind of just remove that gradient. So you want to make sure that none of the foreground or none of the, the detail of the image is selected. So what I'm basically doing is going through all of these squares um, to make sure that no stars, no nebulosity, no part of the galaxy is selected or within these squares. So when we get to the galaxy part, kind of pull this stuff right back um, and make sure that it's not going to interfere. Kind of interesting, there's another galaxy there which I didn't notice before on that. I'm not sure what that is, but that could be another nebula or something. Um, so. Yeah, just kind of making sure they're kind of well away from the stars. It's not going to be selecting any of that and trying to subtract it. Uh, so that's that bit done. And go down to the bottom of the, near the bottom of the image. Uh, none of those are on stars. That might be um, that as well. Pull that away from the galaxy. Uh, that one again as well, all the way back there. This is kind of really difficult to see because there's, there's parts of the spiral arm that, that may or may not be um, not completely part of the background, so um, I need to be a bit cautious there. Um, and then the ones right down the bottom. 
Um, you, you can kind of tweak these these values, the tolerance and um, minimum sample weight. You can kind of increase this one and decrease this one. And it, it sort of um, means that you you should get more boxes, but fundamentally we've got plenty of boxes here already to, to sample um, sample the background. So I'm kind of happy with with that really. I'm going to pull these a bit further away from the galaxy because I don't like how close they are. Um, so once you've done that, go down to target image correction, hit subtraction. You can use the division if you want to, but um, subtraction works for me. And hit execute. Again, this time round, um, you'll get a calibrated image and you'll get a background. I'm going to stretch the background and you can see here that there's a big uh, section um, that's not been touched, which is good. That's what the galaxy is. Um, but the actual background part, you can see that um, some of the gradient has been removed. We then stretch that, um, you should see that um, there should be an improvement one on one on the other. Um, put those two side by side and hopefully you can see that there is a slight improvement. Um, what I also tend to do um, each time, so I can close that one, you will begin to see that the corners of the images are, are slightly improving each time. Uh, what I also tend to do, which works quite well, is running automatic, then background, and then automatic again. And actually that does tend to um, improve and, and um, improve the gradients in the background um, on, on subsequent iterations of doing that. So stretch the, the background image again, you can see that there's been some changes there that have been applied to the image, which is great. Uh, if we stretch this one, uh, let's put these two things tight side by side, make them the same size. Um, and yeah, you can see that there's been some improvement here. You've got this, this bit here, which is a bit red, a bit darker. And that's been sort of modified so it's around about the same as the rest of the image. Um, same in the bottom left and right corners as well. Um, they've been improved, so that's good. Uh, so we, we get rid of the previous one. Um, again, save your work regularly, it's always a good idea um, because things crash, things go wrong. Uh, don't use channel combination because this is already a colour image. Uh, do run background neutralisation um, only because uh, someone recommended that I should. However, um, I don't really ever see an improvement. Um, what I'm also going to do here quickly is just um, uh, just rotate the image. In I can't find the rotation. And rotate this image to rotation. Uh, change that by 90 degrees purely because I prefer that orientation. Um, so that's the image so far. Um, do a color calibration now. Um, so what I do here, and this is this is kind of very quick, is select a very dark area that I know is kind of the the background there's no stars there um it's definitely sort of the yeah, the dark area of the image that forms the background reference point um so to create those previews i hit option and n or alt and n i believe it is on uh, windows uh, do option and n again um, and i select the uh, core of the galaxy this time um, I'm using structure detection here because this is a structure that it needs to uh, process correctly. And the white reference point, select the preview two, which is that region there. Um, and that's the, the white reference and background reference. Um, and then drag the triangle to apply that change to this image. And you can see here now um, that there is a, a good level of color um, correction to that image. Get rid of that. Um, just sort of undo and redo and you can see that that sort of green cast of the image has uh, fundamentally been removed now so that's really good. Uh, I'm just going to delete these previews because I don't need them anymore. Um, that's that done. 
Um, next on to um, actually sort of completing the, the, the stretch as well. Um, so I've been using the auto stretch feature in here, but um, when you turn that off, you've literally got a black image. If you were to save that and import that into Photoshop, that's what you're gonna get. Um, so what we do here quickly is histogram transform function, um, select the image from the view, I've stretched it here. If we do a preview as well, you can kind of see it's, the preview is the stretch plus that, uh, this transformation. Take the triangle, drag that into the um, bottom of the histogram transformation window, um, and that applies this stretch to this um, transformation. And then you'll see that everything's gone white because it's stretched it twice. Um, I hit the reset button for screen transfer function, uh, close that down, and that's the preview done. Um, happy with that. And then I need to uh, either um, drag the triangle or hit the square to apply the transformation to this image. Kind of happy with that, carry on. Um, then on to the curves transformation. So what I want to do here, I'm just gonna apply this to a preview, open up the preview window, um, just literally providing a um, standard sort of S curve um, See, rushing this a bit, that's not what I want to do because that's actually the saturation. Um, so right clicking on those dots removes the dots. Hit RGB and we're going to do a, um, yeah, drop the blacks down, um, increase the, the, the lights um, and create basically um, a bit more contrast to that image. So turning on and off the preview, I can kind of see that, yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. And the, the next step, and that's pretty much the final step for this video, is, is just boosting the, uh, the saturation. Um, so, yep, yeah, boosting the saturation, you can see that the, um, the, the H2 or hydrogen alpha regions of this galaxy have kind of been pulled out just literally from boosting that saturation. And this is a standard RGB image out of a one-shot color camera. Um, there's no, H alpha data in this image at all um, that's been explicitly um, added to this image. So uh, that's kind of that. Uh, just drag that onto there and apply that, and that's the final image. So, um, yeah, very quick whistle stop tour of um, my imaging process that's processing an image in uh, about 12 minutes. Um, very rough and ready, but hopefully, it gives you an idea of, um, of, of what I do and how I do it. Um, just a, a, a moment of um, credit to um, Mitch's channel. Um, Mitch is a fantastic resource in terms of getting to grips with um, PixInsight and understanding how to use it. Um, so far I've learned everything that I know about PixInsight from his, um, his videos, um, PixInsight for Beginners. Uh, well worth a look. Um, there's hours of content there though, so um, yeah, you're gonna have to spend a bit of, uh, bit of time getting to grips with this stuff. So I hope this was useful. Um, if you um, enjoyed this, if you found it useful, beneficial, please hit that like button. Um, that tells me that I'm creating the right and useful things. Um, also, if you want to uh, see other videos, whether it's imaging sessions, whether it's uh, tutorials like this, or just run throughs of what I do, um, please hit that subscribe button as well. Um, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified of uh, future videos. So uh, that's all from me, um, thank you for watching and uh, yep, yeah, goodbye.